Greetings, this is Dr. Jarek Ong uh, with the continuation of the series of videos on how to use uh, SPSS in uh, quantitative research analysis um, for using SPSS. Um, so continue on with this video, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, analysis of variance or ANOVA for short, uh, which is basically a, uh, an extension from the independent sample t-test in my previous videos. So uh, what I would like to uh, show you here is uh, why this is called analysis of variance because uh, we are basically looking at uh, differences uh, between more than two categories. Um, and uh, I'm going to give you an example here in explanation, and then after that, we will move on to the SPSS to show you how it's done in SPSS. So, for example, if, imagine if you have, we want to look at the motivation level for three different groups. So let's say we have Malay, we have Indian, we have Chinese. So imagine that these are just basically the uh, motivation levels uh, between Malays, the Indians, and the Chinese. Now, there are two types of variation that's going to tell us whether or not there's a difference. So when we want to say there's a difference in terms of variation, then of course there will be differences. Uh, if you look at this particular arrow here, this is the difference uh, between the groups. And uh, this is the one that's going to be the uh, indicator that if it's large enough, then we know that there's a difference uh, between the groups. And then, of course, uh, we also cannot discard the fact there is uh, differences uh, within the groups. Yeah, so inside of these individual groups, there's also differences and variances, and that is what we call as variance within. So when we want to check for the differences, we use the F test uh, with two degrees of freedom, which I will explain later. And um, we take the variance between, which is between the groups, and divide over the variance within. And if we say that there are differences between the three groups, then we will say that this variance between would definitely be higher over the uh, denominator, which is variance within. So that's for um, when we want to find the differences. So what ANOVA does is that it will construct for us an ANOVA table. So ANOVA table would have uh, sources of variances. Sources, sources of variation, and um, this sources of variation would, of course, be coming from between the group. And also um, within the group. And of course, there will be the total variation which is the combination of the between groups and the within group. And um, this is usually what we call as the um, SSR, some squares of regression. This is usually what we call as the SSE. And this is usually what we call the SST, some squares of errors and some squares of total. Now, the degree of freedom is the next column that we will see in our ANOVA table. Now, the degree of freedom basically means the amount of information that we have to um, estimate something that is unknown. So, of course, the higher degree of freedom will be better. Now, for the degree of freedoms for the sources of variation between groups, uh, we basically would need to know how many groups we have. So, uh, if we have um, three groups, then our degree of freedom will be basically the categories minus one, which will then be uh, two groups, right? So the degree of freedom for the SSR is actually C minus one, and I'll just call this degree of freedom one, right? Uh, the degree of freedom for within the group will be SSE, which means we take the sample size 
the total sample size of all <coughs> minus the number of categories that we have. So I'll call this degree of freedom 2. And of course, for the total variation, degree of freedom is just sample size minus 1. Um, but these numbers are a little bit too big. So what we do is we uh, take the mean square. Uh, and basically, the mean square is for this, we call the MSR, the mean square error, is basically the SSR, this one here, divide over um, C minus 1, which is degree of freedom 1. Uh, and um, for the mean square within, we take the MSE, which is also called mean square error, we take the uh, SSE and we divide over the N minus C, which is degree of freedom 2. Uh, this one, we don't have to find anything because we are more interested in the F value, the F statistics, which is basically taking the MSR, divide over the MSE. And we will check against the critical value of the F. This is the calculated uh, value of f, we check against uh, we check against the critical value of um, uh, f degree freedom one and degree freedom two to see whether or not we uh, reject the null hypothesis. And of course, the uh, null hypothesis here is that there is equality of um, uh, the means between all groups, right? Now. If we find that there is a significant result in ANOVA, it will only tell us that there is a difference between the groups, but what it doesn't tell us is where those differences are. So we may want to do what we call as a post hoc test to see where the significant difference, uh, uh, significant pairs of differences is. So SPSS will make all the possible when we choose this post hoc um, option. SPSS will make all the possible pairwise comparisons and check for these significant differences. So for example, if you have three groups, SPSS will make three pairwise differences, uh, group 1 minus group 2, uh, group 2 with group 3, and group 3 with group 1. Um, so imagine if you have four groups, then how many pairwise comparisons will you have? Yeah, so you will probably have um, group 1 with group group 1 with group 2 and group 1 with group 3 uh, group 1 with group 4 um, group 2 with group 3 group 2 with uh, sorry group 4 and finally group 3 with group Four, so that will be one, two, three, four, five, six pairwise comparisons. So, do remember that the larger the number of groups, then the it can go a little bit exponential in terms of the pairwise comparisons. Now let's move on to our SPSS example. Now in this SPSS example, we have four departments, which means four groups, and then the number of cases of, uh, that is lodged against, uh, or, or, or rather the number of cases of um, uh, failures or mistakes that each of these uh, departments have committed. So we want to see if there's a significant differences in terms of uh, the number of cases there uh, within the departments, okay? Uh, we also like to look at a post hoc test to see where the significant differences are. So to do an ANOVA, and do bear in mind that this is a one-way ANOVA. If you look at one of my previous videos, a one-way ANOVA basically means that we have one independent variable with more than two categories and one dependent variable, which is a quantitative variable. So it is a one-way ANOVA. So let's do the one-way ANOVA. Analyze, compare means, one-way ANOVA. Put the quantitative variable in the dependent list, 
and the department into the factor. Now, unlike our independent sample t-test, we don't really need to check uh, which ones come first because we're not analyzing means, we're actually analyzing variances. Now, make sure we put in the post hoc test. Let's assume that the variances are equal. Use the LSD. Uh, I know that most people like to use Bonferroni, but I'd rather use the LSD because it's easier in terms of calculation, so continue that. Options, you may want to look at the homogeneity of variances tests if you want to look at it. Uh, look at the means plot and press OK. Now, as you can see here, uh, that uh, Levine's test statistics uh, agrees that there is homogeneity of variances at 5% level. So there is uh, um, homogeneity of variances. Now, let's look at the uh, ANOVA table here. As I looked back at the ANOVA table there, I'm just going to copy in this table and uh, sort of like paste it here so that you can see better. Okay, so you notice that the ANOVA table is exactly the same as what I mentioned here. So you've got the between groups and within groups, the SSR and SSE. You've got the sums of squares, SSR, SSE, and you've got the degree of freedom. So we've got four categories, so uh, C minus one, you get three, uh, within groups, you've got the total of 20, so 20 minus 4, you get 16, and of course, n minus 1, with this 19. And then the mean square, it takes the 30 divided by 3, and the 40 divided by 16, and then the f will be 10 divided over 2.5, you get 4, and it also calculates for you the significant value. So, in this case, uh, there is, so it's like reporting the results, Uh, there is a significant difference in cases between the departments. You need to put in the F316 and this result is um, 4 with a p-value of less than 0 0.05. So make sure that this becomes a postscript to signify that it is subscript, sorry, to signify that this is a smaller number for F and a degree of freedom. Okay, uh, we do not stop here. What we need to do now is to check for the uh, multiple comparison. So we have uh, said that there is a significant difference, so now we need to know where these significant differences are. So if we look at the uh, post hoc test in LSD, you notice that they would have done all the possible pairwise comparisons for you. So the only significant difference that we can see here would be uh, marketing with security department, marketing with facilities department, this is not so significant, uh, this is the same thing, marketing with security, and uh, yeah, that's it. And facilities with marketing, yeah, we've got that. So it's it's between marketing with security and marketing with facilities. So we can add that in. Uh, post hoc uh, reviews significant differences between marketing and facilities and marketing with uh, security and that's it we don't have to add on anything else uh, if you want you can also copy and paste the, our means plots as we have put in there Right. So this is just basically to show uh, our results that marketing with uh, the lower two security and facilities are significantly different. And so that's all with uh, ANOVA with post hoc tests. Uh, if you have any questions with ANOVA, please uh, email me. Thank you for watching.